I will open up the Parks Commission meeting of May 6th, 2021. And approval of minutes is on our agenda. Is there any changes, deletions, or corrections? I'll move approval of the minutes with some edits that I have. Is there a second? Okay, second. Okay, uh, the changes are under the, also in attendance, it lists Alder uh, uh, Juliet Radafrata and city planner Wade Thompson, but there was also Craig Rapp of the TAC, Tree Advisory Committee, and Michael Thorson, who spoke on the jazz at five. Um, let's see, and Spencer Stanberry uh, yeah, Craig Rapp was reporting about TAC and Michael Thorson and Spencer Stanberry were, were about the jazz at five. Did, did I put them in the, uh, yeah, the minutes? They're in the minutes, yes, but it's not under also attending oh, oh, yeah. at the top. And let's see. Yeah. <clears throat> in, this would be 5B, just so it reads better. You have a sentence in the middle of 5B that says, our goal in this process is to do an update. I'd add a comma after that, not to do a large overhaul of our current 2015-2020 POSB. In 5C, uh, we talked about acronyms before. What, the way this would be better, if it is, if it, read it like this. Craig Rapp from the Tree Advisory Committee was in attendance, provide an update, include goals and scope, being currently worked on by the Tree Advisory Committee, that could be either way, TAC or Tree Advisory Committee, and then it goes on, next sentence, cred wrap of the TAC, asks that the commission members review, et cetera. In other words, the first time it's mentioned, spell it out, so it's clear to the public. Okay, next, all right, in, in D, 5D, um, I would suggest adding a sentence, and uh, David, you could uh, weigh in on this because you brought up the issue. I would add a sentence, uh, suggest a sentence that says, discussion, what I wrote down was discussion of concern for sound level and directed away from the east side residences. Would you agree with that, David? Yes, correct. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's see. In the, or after the paragraph, it says Scott Endel introduced, then there's a space in there. So in that space, before the, before the after discussion, in other words, part of the discussion, you got the sentence then or? I know. Okay. Discussion of concern for sound level and directed away from east side residences. I made it a little bit short. You can elaborate a little if you want to. Your, your microphone is off, Scott. Um, okay. And, and then uh, bottom of page four, this would be 5I. There's the first paragraph, Scott, and we'll introduce the next paragraph after discussion, Sue Easter Day. Okay. Uh, 5J, the sentence that starts with my name, Patrick Cheney moved to remove the volleyball post replacement, not tennis. Five J. And I would suggest in six A it says, Scott Endler reported this project's base bid was approved by the Common Council. The alternate bid failed. I would add on to that, the alternate bid failed for the parking lot. So somebody didn't have to go do a whole lot of research to find out what that was. And I think, let's see. Oh, no, there's another one. Okay. And then on number nine announcements, uh, 
it says in, in the minutes right here, it says next two park commissions, May 6 and June 4, it should be June 3. I will say that on our uh, agenda for tonight right here, it does have the correct date of June 3, and then the one after that is July 1. It's just for somehow in the minutes, it got changed to a June 4. Then uh, the paragraph that starts off, Patrick Cheney recognized and thanks Sarah Schroeder, that should really be in number nine as an announcement rather than after the adjournment. Those are my edits. Everybody in agreement? Better no go others. for the second. No others? Mm. Uh, um, I'm, I'm in agreement. Are we seconding the motion? Yeah. Susan. Friendly amendment or just Susan seconded? Yeah, you know, those are more corrections, I'd say, than right. substantial changes. Yeah. Is there any other corrections, changes? Hearing none, voting on the motion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Motion carried, minutes are approved. Public appearances. Oh, uh, no, there's another thing just before that, Mark. I see no public appearances. Oh, yeah, so, no, I'm three. sorry, I was skipping, I checked it off, I'm sorry. Election of Park Commission Chair. I, and I just, uh, just so you are aware, I'm, I'm not um, going to accept any nominations if oh. there was one directed, so. Because that's what I was going to do. Yeah. I think we've done a fine job, I was going to nominate you right away. You sure? Yep. Another term and then you're ineligible to be <laughs> after that. Yeah. Open it up for motion to, or nominations, I should say. Well, I have uh, um, I'd like to uh, nominate Sue Easterday. Um, I've been on the Park Commission for two years now. I think she's shown a very active interest in trying to understand and represent uh, a variety of interests that I think are important. One would be the um, responsible land stewardship and I think she's also been willing to uh, roll up her sleeve, so to speak, and has been a very active person in the Wildwood uh, Neighborhood Association, uh, currently serving as the chair. And um, I, think, I think it's okay to make a change. I, Mark, I think you've provided a lot of uh, continuity and good structure. I think you have a knowledge of the uh, issues as it's been in the past. However, one of my interests are that um, perhaps there needs to be a little different emphasis. So um, I would uh, like to nominate Sue Easterday. We'd be happy to second that. Very good. Just, thank you. And then Sue has to respond, reply. I say thank you, and I will do my best. I think you win by well, default, actually. There's a vote. <laughs> oh, we do have some other people here. We I'm do. Sorry. They're here. And plus, <laughs> maybe any other nominations too. Yeah, that's, that's I was uh, didn't notice the people on Zoom. So <laughs> we're voting on um, on Chair Park. So if you're not aware, um, is there any other nominations? Okay, I will close the nominations and just make it official. Voting on the. Uh, nomination to make Sue the chair, new chair. Uh, all those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 There you go. And Sue becomes you can chair. Assume. I'll just, I'll, I'll stay right here. I'll just smack the gavel. All right. Okay. Here and there. The gavel. <laughs> okay. Shoot yourself. Everybody behave. <laughs> I'll just. You take over from here. Thank you. And this will be. Uh, you need to throw it at anybody who's. It's out of black. Yeah. Oops. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> yeah. Right. I, I agree. I want to thank Mark for his. Yes. Thank you, Mark. As chair. Fine job. So I'm counting on the parliamentarians here to keep me in order. <laughs> so.
So our, uh, our next item is to review and approve the agenda. Do we have a motion to approve it? Yeah, we're down to public no appearances. Public appearances. Oh, yes, there are, there are no public appearances, so we shall yeah. seek a motion to review and approve the agenda. I'll move to approve the agenda. I don't see any reason to change anything. I'll second. All right, we have motion and a second. So in favor of approving the agenda as proposed, as written, in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, moving ahead. Discussion and action items. I would think, Scott, you're going to bring us through these. Tell us about uh, 6A, discussion of comprehensive development plan, CDP 2379-21, request by Jamie Lapp, agent for Fitchburg Minerals, to allow for residential development on property along Lacey Road. Very good. Thank you, Sue. Um, this is a development. Uh, it's called Fitchburg uh, Minerals, LLC. And actually, Craig uh, from, the, from the development is here tonight. So I think I would introduce him and, uh, and let him run through the proposal. I, what, what really has been improving over the years is the, is the fact that these developments have come uh, before the Park Commission uh, as part of the process in, in getting approvals and, and those kinds of things. So we certainly appreciate uh, Craig taking the time and, and appearing before the Park Commission. Uh, you know, the Park Commission does have an important role here in, in deciding park space and, and those kinds of things. So I think with that, we'll, we'll let Craig introduce his, his, his project and the proposed park land, and, and then we'll, we'll begin discussing it. Good evening, Craig Donzi. I'm the engineering manager for Payne and Dolan. The Payne and Dolan is uh, Fitchburg Minerals is a wholly owned subsidiary of Payne and Dolan. Um, this parcel was purchased uh, some time ago with the intent of extracting minerals from it. It was determined a while ago that the mineral value on this parcel just simply isn't the same as the adjoining parcels owned by Payne and Dolan. And at this point in time, and Dolan decided to proceed with the comprehensive development plan process with the city of Fitchburg uh, and start the process of converting the land from presently agricultural to uh, residential, single family and duplex. The comprehensive development plan was submitted uh, to the city. We've met with staff a number of times over probably the past uh, 18 months to a year to kind of work through some of the details of not only their Lacey Road expansion project and how that affects uh, Fitchburg Minerals owned land on both sides of Lacey Road, but also the development of the conference development plan uh, as submitted and included in your packets. I did have a chance this week to, to meet with Scott on site and kind of review the plans generally, the, some of the, the features on the property, kind of look holistically at the, at the limits of ownership Fitchburg Minerals owns more land than is currently included in this CDP submittal. So there's additional lands owned all the way south to Grandview. The quarry that's currently operated by Hammersley east of the proposed development is owned by Fitchburg Minerals with Hammersley being the operator. And then across the street to the north is an additional active quarry for Payne and Nolan. Um, the material coming out of that quarry goes north up to Cottonwood and leaves the site through Cottonwood where the asphalt plant is located. Scott, do you want me to share my screen here to kind of walk through this proposal or how do you want to handle that? Sure, everyone uh, has a packet, but yeah, if you wanted to, to share your screen, that'd be, that'd be fine, Craig. Okay. So the, just kind of a surrounding in, environment. So as we talked about Fitchburg Minerals, so Fitch Verona Road is the township line between the city of Fitchburg and the town of Verona. Uh, Fitch Verona Road is the west limits of ownership of Fitchburg Minerals. Again, they own south to Grandview, and then they, they own north to Lacey Road, 
and then the quarry to the east. This quarry is, is nearing the end of its service life, uh, but still an active quarry for Hammersley Stone. They, they have a shop located in the northwest corner of that parcel, and then there's an active quarry to the south. Across the street is, uh, this is a large quarry. Hammersley had a smaller quarry that's expired now. He's in the final stages of reclamation for that quarry. Payne and Dolan's quarry to the north of Lacey Road is, is nearing the end of its, of its service life. There's less than 10 years of mineral value remaining there. Um, and then east of the quarry is, uh, this is a little older aerial, east of the quarry is um, the industrial lands that include Promega and uh, Sub-Zero and some of the other industrial developments that have occurred west of Seminole Highway. The current proposal for a CDP does include what's shown as this blue box. Um, it's generally south of the crest of the hill in Fitzrona Road. So all the water from this location drains north and then ultimately uh, so it continues north towards the Beltline. The, the reason for the southern limits was uh, kind of a density map from one perspective and then two everything within this current proposal is in the current urban service area. So there's land south of this parcel or south of the CDP limit that is um, in the Fitchburg comprehensive plan expected to be residential served by urban sewer in the future, but not currently in the urban service area. And that urban service area limit um, presently is, is somewhere about where the agricultural stripe shows up in the aerial. Uh, from farming practices. Scott and I did have, there is a, a, a significant amount of mature hardwoods on uh, steep slopes on the southeast corner of the CDP and we've designed the subdivision around that. Uh, there's a number of mature oaks in there. There's some rock outcroppings, mm -hmm. a lot of under underbrush at this point in time and some invasive trees that have, have grown in there over time. But there is some significant uh, valuable mature canopy that we're looking to preserve. Uh, on the southeast corner of the, of the property. Mm -hmm. From a drainage perspective, lands to the east, primarily Fitchburg Minerals Quarry, uh, operated by Hammersley, does drain through a pond. It's really a sediment pond for them and then drains through an agricultural swale in the middle of the property, continues west to Fitchrona and then runs along Fitchrona north and under the Lacey Road intersection. The development has been designed uh, really to preserve that, that drainage way and make, make use of it as some open space uh, and, and some trail connectivity is kind of some of the initial thoughts and discussions we've had with city staff. And then Lacey Rose expansion project will, will alter the, the hillside on the northeast corner of the property, lowering that hill about seven feet. And then they're currently um, in discussions with Payne and Dolan about siting a regional stormwater pond immediately south of our office building. So it's about where the hand is uh, in the development. There were test pits dug for that yesterday morning, I think, uh, just before Scott and I got on site. So that's kind of an overview of kind of the lay of the land where the, where the development is proposed. Some topographic information that was included in the CDP. Again, some steeper slopes, particularly on the south half of this uh, project. Most of of the project will include some fill material brought uh, right now it's envisioned as being brought across the street we've got excess material in the quarry that's been stockpiled there for a number of years we have an opportunity to to move that material south uh, as we reclaim that quarry and then benefit the subdivision This is presenting a little funny, but there's some phasing envisioned here. The first phase is intended to be to the west. That allows that regional pond to be constructed, provides access to Pitchrona Road and access to Lacey Road at Rock Ridge Road. So that's where Quarry Vista's uh, main entrance and exit is. So that aligns those two uh, intersections. There was a prior proposal that we were working collaboratively with the city with Lacey Road's project to come through a small piece of property owned by the Hammersley family. Their septic system is actually on that parcel for the shop. Um, there were some complications there with trying to get uh, access to two points in phase one. So we've made revisions in the last month 
delayed submittal about a month in order to make some revisions to it to include two road connections as part of phase one. So that that's really kind of driving a change in layout, not a drastic change, but certainly an update in the layout since uh, shared with staff about a month, a little over a month ago. No changes to the general street pattern of kind of east west streets and uh, some provisions for con you know connections to the south with that future residential development once the sewer service area is expanded. Uh, again, uh, these are our lands that are additional lands owned by Fitchbrook Minerals. The park and open space set aside right now is primarily the um, that mature woods that Scott and I looked at on site the other day. Again, that drainage swale open space between uh, residential lots and then some opportunity um, and we're still working with the city on kind of the size of the pond. We, ideally, we'd like to set aside an active space park area adjacent to Fitzroner Road, kind of west of the pond in the first phase. And then some open space, um, sloped open space along the south side of Lacey Road uh, that backs up to some of the duplexes that are proposed. There are sidewalks on both sides of the road as required by the city. And we are contemplating how to you know, provide some internet connectivity uh, to the interior of the development within those uh, stormwater drainage and infiltration soil areas. Kind of an overall drainage map to kind of see where the water is coming from. Again, the crest in the hill, majority of the water from the south uh, within that service area will come into that regional pond as we're anticipating. And then there's, again, Lacey Road's drainage system and some adjacent lands just to the north of Lacey Road would come. Uh, right now, the city's proposing to send that through an easement uh, on the west side of Fane and Old's office into the regional pond. A look kind of at density. So generally, the lighter shade yellow is low density residential or single family. The medium density uh, are are envisioned as duplexes. So side by sides on a single lot. And just kind of a look at zoning. So same thing, they would fall into the LM and M zoning categories for Fitchburg. And we're hoping to get some feedback from, from parks tonight on kind of what they see as being beneficial to the community for park and open space. and and uh, some impressions of, of the concept plan before it goes to plan commission later in the month. If I, if I might, Sue, just add a little bit more context. Yes, please do. It, it, and actually I included in your, in your packet uh, the, uh, the, the staff comments that I made for the planning department in regards to requirements. You know, depending on the, the number of units that is proposed in the development, they, the development would be required to donate 9.05 acres of park, of, of property, and then in regard, and provide $78,390 in park improvement fees. Uh, and, as, and as Craig mentioned, we did go out earlier this week to to visit the site, and I, I guess from, from a staff perspective, I really, you know, similar to the Terra, Terra Vesa development, I see potential for a diverse, a diverse park system right within this development. Certainly the, the woodlot on the ridge is really, is really, is really good, uh, and that's on the, you know, the southeast corner. Uh, but certainly the idea of, of trying to find three acres or two or three acres of of flat space that we could have for open play or have a playground or, or some kind of a, a, a park facility. And certainly the, the linkage, you know, linear linkage, you know, that the open space that they've got proposed here along with, you know, a, a potential trail system into the, into the woodlot. And as Craig mentioned, as this continues to develop to the south and to the east, is going to provide additional opportunities for additional woodlots, along with uh, some additional flat space for uh, for for open play and, and those kinds of things. Um, so 
So I guess those would be my general, you know, observations. Certainly another, another thing that I made note of is on the east side of Fitzrona, uh, they've identified a, a path, uh, and certainly the idea of continuing that path uh, north to, to Lacey and then continue on on the north side of Lacey along Fitzrona, there's an existing path there. Uh, and then potentially try to, you know, I think, you know, a path uh, on, the, on the south side of, of Lacey where they've got the park commission or the, the park land allocated or, or dedicated would then continue to the, to the east as we continue going to the east. So I, you know, from my, just generally the idea of, I see conservancy opportunities here. I see trail system connections. Uh, and I guess the last thing that we would need to have would be some kind of open play space for, for, for some kind of a playground or, or that kind of an amenity. Where, where, is, this, uh, where is this flat area then in there? Well, they're, they're proposing it would be adjacent to, uh, and Craig, maybe you correct me if I'm wrong, but they're, they're looking at along the, on the, on the east side of, of Fitzrona. Adjacent to Fitzrona? Adjacent to Fitzrona, yeah. What's that? Has the Planning Commission examined the plan yet? Not at, not at this point. But, you know, and we're just, we're providing comments as we've done and related to parks and park space and, and those kinds of things. And certainly, you know, I think Craig would be interested in any, any comments that the Park Commission might have uh, regarding, you know, the, 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 the whole parcel. Well, one obvious thing is, severe flooding that's been occurring in the Goose Lake area. And I realize that uh, developers are required to retain um, stormwater so that it's relatively clean when it gets out there, but it's still gonna get out there. And I'm sh although it gets out there now, it's, it's more rooftops is gonna be a real big problem. I wonder if Public Works has taken a real hard look at this. The other one is um, we have absolutely no street frontage on this park, and I think that's, that's a real important thing to get. Um, the third is um, there's really no access to phase one development, and although I, you know, it could be provided, something should be, something should be provided so that at least the there is a park, unless they expect it to be built out pretty quickly. And I saw their timeline, but who knows with market conditions. Uh, I had the same question about whether the um, park frontage, I just see a little bit at the bend of a road uh, farthest to the east, to the woodlot area. But how does that comport, how does this comport with the uh, city requirements, the code and ordinances for uh, park frontage? It's hard for me to tell on a map. It, it looks deficient, but I don't know if that's been calculated. Um, and I, it's the Goose, uh, it's Goose Lake that you're talking about? You know, I was asking, you referred to um, the stormwater going into, is it called Goose Lake? Goose Lake, Goose Lake yeah. Yeah. They don't know where to put the water in there, Yeah, and this, the Public Works was working on a study of the Goose Lake area that's, I don't think it's quite finished, but they're working on it, and so, I'm gonna assume that staff is gonna coordinate that, but you know, we just wanna make sure that we don't have flooded parks <laughs> as a result that develop here and any, that the stormwater is going to just be handled correctly. 
So I, I think they're on it just by virtue of doing that study, but it's a, it's a concern because it's longstanding. I just problems. raise it as a concern for plan commission and public works. Right, agreed. I know it's out of the bar purview per se. Exactly. In, in, in regards to park frontage, Sue, if you if you refer, if we can go to my comments, which are on page page eight, uh, street frontage for park parked for ordinance. Uh, that's what the section where it's identified, and in it it's. You know, there is no, that it was changed a, a while back that there's no calculation, if you would. Uh, the council, upon receiving a recommendation from the Park Commission and Plan Commission, shall have the authority to allow alternative dimensions for frontage and the park, uh, and the park if it can be found that the objectives of access and visibility can be fulfilled. So it's really kind of our judgment on, on the Park Commission's judgment on whether or not there's adequate access. And certainly I think as I, I look at the, uh, what page is it here, the, there, there appears to be pretty... Is it page 27 you're going for there? Uh, I'm going, actually, I'm going more towards... Um, Oh, maybe that is 27. Some of these that are just colored in in yellow and green don't show it, but on page 27 of the packet out of 66 pages, it has um, pass-throughs between some of the lots, and I didn't mm -hmm. see that on the other one, and now I see it on here, so I was going to bring that up, but I see them. And actually on page 20, on page 30, you know, I see, I see you know, road frontage on, on the park space, I guess, access. Um, I'll make a kind of a piggyback comment on, I don't know if it was Sue or Mark, uh, maybe both of them, about the, the visibility of, of the big park being set aside. Um, that seems like a pretty primo spot, and although I haven't seen it myself, just your description, Craig, of the, uh, uh, you know, the mature trees and the, the rock outcroppings, it sounds like a really unique and valuable feature. So, um, you know, I'm already really excited about that becoming a park space. Um, it's a great opportunity for some, you know, passive recreation, mm -hmm. hiking and things like that. Um, um, so, you know, props to you guys for choosing to set that aside and make park space of it. Um, but it is, it is a little bit hidden and tucked away, so it might not be um, used as well as it might be able to be just for lack of people knowing about it. And um, you, Craig, I think you made a comment about exploring some potential internal walkway connections. Um, and so the first thing that, that kind of comes to my mind is if you might be able to uh, combine those two goals of making some internal walkways and providing better access, if not you know direct drivable access, but at least visual access to that park, um, uh, perhaps uh, splitting, um, you know, moving some of those lots around the corner and then making the connection to that street more center and then you know making an internal walkway connecting through there into the drainage way or something to open up a, a visual corridor that would be seen, potentially could be seen from Lacey Road, because uh, I'm assuming Lacey Road would still be at a higher elevation somewhat um, from this. So, you know, that could potentially just open up a little bit of a greenway through there uh, where passersby could see it and then, you know, say, hey, there's a park back there or, or you know, something to that effect. But I think improving, um, um, awareness of that space could be important. But uh, overall, I think that this plan has a lot going for it. Um, uh, the drainage way through the middle could be an opportunity for some pathways, native plantings, um, you know, things like that. So uh, there's a, I think there is a lot of valuable space here. Thanks, Chris. The other thing to keep in mind is, as the quarry to the east is reclaimed and also, you know, ultimately comes out of aggregate production and is being and is reclaimed, that is likely to become 
um, a significant uh, open space area. I don't know that it's, we're, we're, I don't know that Painball is making commitments for park space there yet, but it's certainly uh, a really good opportunity for a considerable amount of open space um, yet to the east of that woodland. So, and that's some of what Scott and I talked about when we were on site is, is really when you look at, at that area globally, um, particularly that Fitchburg Minerals Quarry going east, there's a real opportunity there to link up the rest of that hillside. There's more of the wooded hillside than is currently included in the CDP. So as future phases to the south go, there are some additional pockets uh, moving south that you can kind of see in your in your aerial overview on page 26 of your, 25 of your packet. Um, it is expected that some of those additional lands would then uh, link together and provide some of that interconnectivity and visibility we're talking about. And the other thing to remember is that wooded hillside, which is rock, um, it probably sits a good 50 feet, 30 to 50 feet, depending on which end you're on, above Fitcherona Road. And it's it's probably a good 15 or 20 feet above Lacey Road. So it just its natural topography does sit considerably higher and in a visible position, even with homes uh, below it. So that, that's another reason we, you know, it's, it's special space in there. And we've all spent some time in there as we worked on this project and, and surveying and land planning and, and other things that Painted Olin's done in there over the last years. Uh, there's some really special space in there. It's just simply uh, uncared for mature woodlands that's, that's being overrun by some invasive trees. But some of those oaks that are in there are just outstanding. And Scott noticed them from just standing in our parking lot, looking you know, out across that agricultural field that's not yet planted. You see all those oak tops having not yet quite leaked out. Um, I mean, they're mature. There's large, large mature oaks in there that we certainly would like to see preserved for some time. I'd, I'd, I'd be interested in the commission's thoughts on the, the open play space, uh, locations or size. Um, you know, is there concerns with the close to Fitzrona Road? Um, you know, and I think Craig would be interested in that too to kind of help direct the next, uh, the next phase of this, I guess. Particularly some of the discussions, so some of the discussions we've had with Public Works on the Lacey Road project, we're really just citing that pond. Does that regional pond, you know, where's, where's the desirable park space, where's the desirable location for a, a regional pond that serves lots of, lots of interest, not just Pittsburgh Minerals, Pan and Olin, but also the city. You know, does the pond really want to sit kind of in what's likely future um, higher density development, I'm not going to say multifamily, but what's business today along the Lacey Road? Um, you know, re really some feedback on that open space location and and the pond location out of this group would also be helpful to kind of the, the broader discussions we're having with public works and city staff and, and what we anticipate to be some discussion at Planning Commission in the coming weeks as well. Uh, uh, Craig, uh, how about to the um, how about to the east at the bottom at the bottom of the hill? You know the woodlot is up on the ridge. Is there? What about on the bottom of the hill there? Um, so like between Hammersley's Quarry and what we're calling Road A and Phase Two, is that what you're alluding to, Scott? Um, it, it's kind of on the bend. Around the bend, yes, yes. Yeah, there's definitely some level area there. Um, you know, between the two, there's some connection. That was really envisioned as connectivity, not just to the woodlot, but to that future um, reclaimed quarry to the east. Yeah. yeah. As opposed to having to come off of. Well, and I guess. Lacey, I, yeah, Lacey I guess. Road, you can come that direction. Well, and I guess. And, and remember, there's going to be another couple hundred homes long term to the south. I mean, this is a large proposed residential development, but the, the remaining lands to the south are going to be even more residential units than this. There's and, a lot of land to the south yet to go. And I guess that's what I'm suggesting, that if there's, you know, a small parcel on, on the current one that we're looking at, but then some additional that could be added to the east when that development comes in, you know, I think that that would be valuable too. 
you know, certain, you know, it's not just this development, how it ties in with the neighboring developments and, and those kinds of things. Um, Scott, if I could, um, I'm not sure where Grandview is. Uh, how many acres does uh, Payne and Doyle own? And what percent of the total uh, ownership is this? Is this looked at as a multi year development, it takes 20 years to develop? What, I, could you give us a little bit more context? I did, that I can't, that, that's really Payne and, Payne and Dolan's, uh, you know, their, their information, I guess, from the park perspective, we certainly, and I kind of alluded to this to Craig, that we're concentrating on this specific, um, you know, CDP that he has before us, uh, but certainly we can, try to think about how it's going to develop to the east and to the south, but I, I, you know, I don't know what their holdings are. And, and oh, well, why don't we just ask them? I mean, hmm? in other words, we're, we're looking at a little piece of a much bigger puzzle. How big is the puzzle? Yeah, if you look at page 25, you can see the, the holdings from Grandview. So from Lacey Road to Grandview is almost a mile. It's just short of a mile. Fitchburg Minerals owns in excess of 200 acres north of Grandview, south of Lacey Road. This proposal is about, it's a little less than a quarter of the total ownership south of Lacey Road. Uh, okay, so, I, I appreciate that. I, again, I'm just looking for a, a context. Um, yeah, and, and also to keep in mind, you know, you, you, we don't, you know, we can't predict absorption, but what I can tell you is Fitchburg issued over 125 single family building permits this year with very little inventory remaining. This puts, this would put, you know, 150 round number of units uh, in the inventory. So just kind of a context of how fast at the current pace, Fitchburg's residential supply is being exhausted. And some of the reason, some of the urgency um, to bring a product of this size to market. <clears throat> okay, thank you. Um, just one other little uh, question about the plan. On, uh, I think it's page 31, there's something that's behind Hammersley uh, and Payne and Doyle uh, lots called future development. What is that concept? So that was a yield plan that we wanted to share with the city from a really an economic development perspective. And again, it goes right back to that comment about current residential inventory in the city and the, and the need or the opportunity that this large parcel under single ownership presents a pretty unique opportunity for the city to add to that supply. And so it was just simply a conceptual yield plan to be able to have an intelligent conversation with <coughs> elected officials and staff about what what inventory could be available on this large parcel. Again, it's owned by, you know, Fitchburg Minerals and Payne and Dolan, that's not a developer. Um, you know, that, that's a large, that's a large holder of, of land across the state and, you know, a mature company that's been in Fitchburg for a long time. So getting back to one of the questions I don't think I know the, or have heard an answer to, we, we're talking about the, the area on the southeast that has got a lot of potential as a wooded area. And the question is, where is the play space? Um, and then I think I heard uh, Craig ask us about uh, looking, um, to the Fitchrona end of things on the west side, ask us about stormwater pond location. So in that open area where we see stormwater pond, there's a line drawing there. Um, I, I guess as parks commissioners, if I was understanding the question, we can't, we don't know what that would volume needs to be, but is that also the question of there would be play space there somewhere near the stormwater pond? Is that a remark that was made or did I misunderstand? 
Yes, it is an opportunity to reduce the size of that pond to provide some active play space immediately adjacent to Patrona. Okay. There's also an opportunity to put some active play space at the bottom of the hill, as Scott alluded to, so adjacent to the quarry at the lower end of the, of the wooded out lot on the steeper, you know, which is sloped with some outcroppings and just some pretty neat space. Um, you could put some active space on the bend of that curve there as well. Okay. So some, to me, it's either or. You'd want to kind of consolidate it, but we're definitely looking for some feedback on, you know, where this body feels it's best position to be used, uh, not just by the residents of the subdivision, but as a community, as a community asset. Well, I, guess. I wonder uh, about, because we don't know what the size of the stormwater, how it will be sized, that's not quite known yet, um, it, how people feel about having children's play space next to a pond. Some people don't like that type of a risk. Um, but we just don't know. We don't know if there's a lot of room there, and certainly there'd be a way to landscape etc for barrier and then the other so it's it's either or we ha we're supposed to indicate whether we would like the play space closer to Fitchrona Road or closer to the north tip of the wooded area on the east end of the property if I might yeah it, it, and really it's it's kind of we're providing feedback on, yes. on what we'd like to see you know certainly like you say the stormwater facility is not sized so we don't know what can happen there. I guess I suggested, because we didn't know the stormwater size, is there a potential for some open space at the bottom of the, you know, the bottom of the woods? So I think really at, at this point, we're, as a park commission, providing comments to, you know, to Craig and his team as it relates to park and recreational facilities. And then they, they take those comments and and when it comes back to us for approval, we'll say, hey, Craig, remember when we talked about that? How did you solve that problem? Did you, you know, did you create some additional visibility of the woodlot or, you know, all the, you know, it really is kind of a, a discussion, if you would, Sue. Certainly, I think right. you can provide comments. And, and that's, that's the beauty of it as it's been going recently where they come to us. Mm -hmm. I kind of provide some thoughts or ideas. Park commissioners provide thoughts or ideas, and then they, with the idea that they're going to want to get park commission approval, they're going to yeah. come back and, and, and make those, make those uh, adjustments as they, as they can. Okay. I had just thought I heard Craig say it, he was looking at it as an either or, and he wanted feedback. And so I just wasn't feeling I could say anything about the area near the stormwater pond because we just don't know enough to give... Uh, sort of an, to make an educated guess. But anybody else who has opinions to share, I think we, this is the time. Um, I can see how either location or both would work. So I, I don't have a strong, especially not knowing what the stormwater pond area near Richerona Road is really gonna look like. Um, either area might work well. You know, we, we, as we look at it too, we anticipating, we don't know when the development will happen to the east or to the, to the south, but we'll, we'll have to factor that kind of into our decision making also. A lot of unknowns. Anybody else here would like to chime in? Patrick? Yeah, a couple of questions. Craig, on page 29 of the packet, there are green lines on there, and I'm not sure if that is showing the aisleways between lots or if those green lines are something else. I couldn't find anything in the key of the map of what they are. In some places they look like they line up with some of the other pass-throughs on another page to go between lots, but I don't know. Yeah, those are those are storm sewer. Okay, storm sewer locations that do, to convey stormwater from south to north or towards the, the regional pond. 
And just for a place to put them, do they happen to be in some of those uh, aisleways between lots? Yeah, they are placed between lots, uh, again, just to move stormwater back and forth. Okay, so they may, they may be underneath the, um, I presume it's a blacktop multi-use path that goes between the lots. And just for convenience, the, the storm sewer is placed under that path through those same aisleways. Yeah, some of those locations, there could be opportunity for path connections or, okay. again, spread the lots apart you know, drop out some units and, and try to create some open connectivity. Craig, could you clarify if any of those drainage easements are available for pathways? I think, I think any of them could be made available. That's some of the feedback we're looking for is how much connectivity for um, you know, some of these open spaces is really desirable. That you get multiple opinions. Some some want a lot of connectivity, some don't. Uh, so I think some of that is what we're hoping to get feedback on tonight too, from the, just as a commission. How much connectivity is desirable uh, from this body's perspective into those open spaces? And in what form? You know, is it just simply wider green spaces or is it, are they improved in any way, natural or paved? As I am looking at this, I would, Scott, I don't know if you agree with this, encourage a secondary access into the wooded area from the western edge of it. So from row, I believe from the corner at road B. Yeah, that, that, I agree. It seems like it would be nice to have a secondary access into mm -hmm. that space. Instead well, and of even, just from the north. I, I, I know too, Craig, even, you know, mid, mid block connections are, are are probably desirable too. And, and that might help with the visibility thing that, that, that Chris is mentioning. Mm -hmm. that's, that's possibly something the same as I was uh, mentioning earlier. And a lot of these maps don't show the pass-throughs, but on page 27, Craig, could you verify, uh, let's see, road A, road B, um, there's, what do we see here? Besides the uh, so something of whatever it is, a couple hundred feet or something of street frontage that goes into the southeast corner, then I see two what I think are pass-throughs between lots 20 and 21, between 14 and 15, and then on road B, between 11 and 12, and between 7 and 8, those are all pass-throughs between lots, which also happen to be, I think, where stormwater culverts are going through. Well, they're currently stormwater easements that can be expanded to make them usable passageways. I, I don't, I wouldn't think that the 20-foot storm easement's adequate if you're going to use them for access, but they, you know, you, there is certainly an opportunity at this stage of the process to, you know, give us some feedback that we'd like you know, one or two of those expanded to provide additional access into that yeah. wooded area. Um, that's, you know, now's an easy time to incorporate. That's that's that change. That, that's what I'm hearing. So right. right, right now they, you're really looking at them. All those ones, those four of them that I noted, you're looking at them as the stormwater easements through there, and you say 20 feet wide. Correct. But they can be expanded, you know, if, if there's connectivity desired, we would want to expand those to make okay. them you know, what, usable. Uh, usable. And yeah, and I was, I was looking for access into the southeast corner there from road A and road B. And when I saw the map here on page 27, I was first interpreting those as pass-throughs, but I also see they have the green lines on them. Uh, I think they do make good um, pass-throughs for pedestrian access to some of these places. And, be, and some of them go uh, between one street and another, yeah, well, which right. I think makes good access. And, and, and I tell you, if they can be all lined up in a row instead of staggered, would, would, even, be, would even be better. Well, yeah, that's, that's a good um, comment. Uh, but the trouble is if they are necessarily where they need to be for the stormwater, for the, for the uh, yeah, stormwater collection co 
culverts, then I suppose we, I mean, that could be a problem for telling them to line up all of the stormwater culverts. If this was just strictly pass-throughs from, let's say, road C to road B to road, a, well, no, it's over there, from road C to road A and over to the left well, uh, yeah. between there, yeah, we could put pass-throughs anywhere that we like, but if they are possibly going to be placed on top of stormwater easements, which sounds reasonable, it's kind of based on where the stormwater might need to go. Well, and, and, and I guess what I'm saying is it could be a combination of stormwater easements and non-stormwater easements so that they line up. Yeah, and it could be a, a good uh, objective to go for is to try and line up some of those. Uh, let's say on the right end there, there's, there's a, let's say from the top here, well, okay. From north of road C, there's a stormwater, I guess, which could be a pass-through between lots 20 and 21. And then you shift over three or four lots, and then there's between lot 9 and 10, there's a pass-through or stormwater at this point. And then that almost lines up with one between 25 and 26, which pretty close lines up with 2021. So that almost goes through fairly straight through there. And, and I guess at the end of the day, Craig, you're, you're hearing that we're interested in those, in those uh, pass-throughs to connect, you know, connect the different, the different areas. Yeah, and I think, that, I think there's an opportunity there for us to take that feedback and, you know, and turn it into something and try to keep them, you know, I don't know that we want to line them all up, but I think there's some opportunity to, you know, to put some connectivity there that's a little more logical, a little more convenient um, from north to south and, and add a little bit of additional connectivity back into the wood lot is what I'm hearing from Commissioner. Yeah, I would recognize that if the stormwater uh, culverts or, or tiles or something have to be in those places or close to it or so, that may be a problem for moving them around, but just as an objective, if they can maybe be shifted a little and then that lines up, um, put a pass-through on top of each of them and then the pass-through lines up as well. Scott, currently, well, let me rephrase, uh, 20 foot wide is what was mentioned here is that they currently are as a storm uh, easement, stormwater easement. How does that compare to other paved access we have to existing parks. I know we have a very tiny one of 10 feet at Wildwood Park. That's probably not big enough. Yeah, no. I, typically, we, we like to try to do an 8 to 10 foot paved path and, and 5 feet on each side. So you get to the 20 foot easement that, that Patrick is referring to. So 20, 20 feet might be sufficient standards or based on standards you've already Minimum is, is it's basically minimum. what we what we try to do now. Yeah. Okay. What does uh, what does Craig have in mind when you talk about possibly expanding the stormwater easements to what width if it was a pedestrian pass through? Well, I don't know that we'd want to expand them all, but there might be you know a key location or two where we would want to you know make a little more emphasis to it. Um, and provide some of that visibility that we also heard tonight into the, particularly into that wooded lot. I, I think we just need to kind of take your feedback, um, you know, think about it, figure out how to apply it to the topography out there and some of the preliminary designs that are done. And, um, you know, coming off the Planning Commission meeting in a few weeks, we'll have an opportunity to, to combine your feedback with Planning Commission feedback, staff comments, um, you know, some of the engineering design side of it on our end and as we start to move things forward and as I like to say, kind of shine it up and uh, advance the ball towards the next phase, which is preliminary flat in the entitlement process. And by the time we get to that point, the engineering plans are a little farther along, the flats are a little further along, the, but we've, we're getting your valuable feedback now and, and I'm kind of understanding what you're thinking and seeing. And, and we'll try to take that into account and balance that with staff comments and, and plan commissioner's thoughts as well. Do you have a number in mind for a width that would be um, reasonable for a pedestrian pass-through between the lots? In other words, so that 
I, and I've seen it in some places where a blacktop path is, I think, five feet from the house that is on either side. So well, you've got setbacks on these lots in addition to that. I mean, I can tell you, Fane and Nolan have to pave paths in almost every municipality in Dane County in 20 feet or less. Um, but I do think there is some some opportunity and some uh, to create a, a vista into that wood lot that where we would look to expand it a little bit. And I don't want to give you a number tonight, but okay. I think I think we've heard I've heard loud and clear there's some opportunity to kind of shift some lots around and open and create an open space in that wood lot. We'd want to kind of carefully look at where is the best vista into that wood lot, not just with this phase, but keeping in mind there's more wood lot to the south and the west that we'd want to you know kind of look at it holistically and what you know what makes it look the most attractive. I mean there's some sight lines kind of looking down the contour lines where you see those outcroppings, especially if the understory is removed there and the ulster allows it to kind of dominate the, the hillside. To kind of look down a vista where you see some of those natural outcroppings I think could be pretty special. Okay. We want to put some thought into that. I have um, then just as like a follow-up to the discussion about the pass-throughs. In phase two, then, uh, between lots 11 and 12, that would be, I think, a good area for a pass-through on from road B. Uh, again, you, you know more of what would occur as you come down that road B and you see between lots seven and eight. There's another pass-through. And it sounds like you're describing more, possibly more woodlot down there, but it's not right, it's not in the urban service area yet, so you really can't make plans, except that you are making plans for uh, the existing lots in phase two. So if there is, to the best of your knowledge, going to be additional woodlot down behind, on the south edges of lots nine, Eight seven six five four, a pass through in there somewhere might make sense. Right now, it'd be a pass through to nowhere, but as with future development, it'd be a pass through to the next area of the park slash woodland. So the woodlot does continue all the way to lot four. Okay. It goes past, it goes past that, but the the majority of the quality material is from lot four, which is the future connect the future connection to the south. From there, all the way east along that ridge is are those mature oaks, and the contours run diagonally through there. They don't run east-west; they run southwest to northeast. So the, you know, the really the special vista is really off the back end of that cul-de-sac that's currently shown there. It, it's a temporary cul-de-sac. From that point, looking north and east, is looking right along that outcropping face that pops in and out of those trees. Okay. So I don't, I don't, you know, I don't necessarily know that putting it on the bend the long term is the best location, but we want to, we want to just be deliberate about that and put some thought into it. Okay. Yeah. If, if I could add something, I, I think what we're talking about is a circulation that might be for pedestrians, might be for bicycles, might be for kids going to visit a neighbor, and so. Th that uh, people that are there in the community are able to circulate in a way. Um, that is other than the street and the sidewalk. And it makes it more of a, an adventure. It's a different kind of experience. And I think uh, there are examples where, uh, in Fitchburg, where there are developments where that's been done successfully. And I would think as a concept that that would have a great amenity to the lots themselves. Um, it's not just the acreage, it's, it's the context, it's the surrounding, it's the experience. And I think uh, when you go home, you get out of your car, you decide to take a walk, you don't necessarily want to walk on the same street that you've been driving on. If there's a little cut through pathway that takes you then to something that's bigger, I think that's a, a really important design idea. And um, I guess I would really ask you to, to look at other plans where, where that's there's more than one level of circulation, and it's not just on the primary streets. So, I like that idea too. Yeah, yeah and that, that's consistent with, with our thoughts too, especially with the corridor to the east. 
I mean, keep in mind the slopes on that hillside are incredibly steep. I mean, it's it's not uh, it's not recreational walking. It's it's more along the lines of hiking. But there is definitely an opportunity to make connections into a reclaimed quarry on the on the east side of that wood lot. That we we agree with, you, and that's kind of the, the, the vision we've had too. Is I didn't provide that connectivity in that larger open space. The open space takes many different forms. Steep hillsides without croppings, more level areas, reclaimed quarry, just uh, you know, drainage whales uh, that can have natural planches in them. Some might have uh, formal walkways, some might have passive walkways or, or a natural, naturally surfaced walkway. But we, we agree with it. That's feedback we're, we're happy to hear. No, oh, please go ahead, Mark. I'd like to go back to my original comment of why we're not advocating for more street frontage. Um, this is a, one of my favorite areas of Fitchburg, and it's, it's always been, and I, I've always kind of realized that it's probably going to be developed at some point, but it's unfortunate because it's a, it's a real pretty area. And I... I I don't know why we always give to um, accepting fees in lieu of when there's an opportunity where we should really be obtaining some street frontage in an area that we have to live with forever. And you know, I realize there's economic issues for everything, but I think this is one that to me is extremely important. Um, even more than some of the pathways, because uh, with street frontage, it improves access from everywhere. And I don't know why, in this case, we're not really fighting for it, you know, advocating. It's, it's important to me. Um, I will never approve this, this park if it doesn't have street frontage. So, Mark, the... Um so the on road A on the south side of it where lot 23 ends, uh, the, the only street frontage that is currently exists is between there and then the south edge of a lot 13 that's actually in phase three. Do we know how many feet that is of open street frontage to the park? Do you have a number for that, Craig? I, I don't at the present moment. I, if you give me a little bit of time, when can we discuss other things? I should yeah. be able to dictate this. One. Yeah, I mean, I in a in the perfect world, I I, I absolutely and in the imperfect and the perfect world, I agree with Mark. Uh, newer developments have meager access, and in the older neighborhoods that I'm familiar with near my home, there's a lot more open. Oh, openness to the feel of the park. Uh, it seems more welcoming to have more frontage. And I also acknowledge it's an economic formula for the developer, but it is an asset to that neighborhood to have more frontage to a park than what we currently see on most new developments, including this one. There's a little over 300 feet there right now. Is there an average lot width? Because all these lots look like approximately the same width. So it looks like, uh, you know, on an average lot size, it looks like about three lots wide for the space that goes through. Do you know what an average width is for, all, for these lots? They're, they're in the 80 to 90 foot range. They fit into your your um, LN dwelling for the residential. 80 to 90. So about three times that probably for that street frontage? Yeah, that street frontage is just a little over 300 feet. Okay. As it's shown currently. Um, question for Scott on that. Okay. On your page eight, 
where it talks about the street frontage. Now that's the fee that the council eliminated, right? Street frontage, there is no fee if somebody doesn't provide adequate street frontage. Yeah, but wasn't there still some either recommendation or minimum street frontage in that uh, ordinance? No. Um, there not there in the comprehensive plan for the parks and open space? Uh, I'm not aware of it. I, I, as I read, I may have seen it elsewhere. I thought there was a formula. It, it's probably not in here. Well, I we thought have, I saw we something. We have a right as a park commission to right, exactly decide on adequate street frontage right. and access to park lands. Right. Um, they're not dedicating all the park land. We're getting a fee in lieu of. I'd rather. No, they, they actually, I'll give up the fee in lieu of any day. They're, they're actually proposing to dedicate about 13 or 14 acres, which is above the nine acres that they're required to, to dedicate. I just mentioned in there, if the parkland dedication isn't accepted, then there would be a fee in lieu of that parkland dedication. They're, they're, <coughs> they're, in, uh, they're above the parkland dedication requirements per ordinance. So F again above. Patrick. Yeah, so what, what is it, uh, Craig, is it 13 or 14 acres that you're proposing here? Yeah, it's in that order of magnitude. We're, you know, it's about one and a half times what would be required. Right, and nine is required, so they're above the parkland dedication requirement. Okay. Uh, Patrick, you had a comment. So, yeah, I wanted an explanation on your page eight right here. Uh, I, I think what you've calculated out, Scott, is that if it was all in acreage, if all of the required dedication based on the number of units times 2,900 feet, if it was all in acreage, the required would be 9.09 .09 acres. If it was all in fees at the 2021 rate of $4,330, then the total all in fees would be 588,880. Okay. Any land. Okay. So, but... Um, there's nothing on this page, as far as I see, that tells us how much they are proposing to dedicate no, land. No, that's included in their. That's included in their packet. It's somewhere else. Yeah, it's in there. Here, let me see if I can find it for you, quick. Uh, it's on page thirty. It's eleven point seven acres 30. of <clears throat> park and conservancy, and another five and a half acres of open, five point four acres of open space. And again, the open space wasn't was separated because it it can have it's anticipated to have some drainage significant drainage facilities in it, um, and so it wasn't wasn't counted at this point as P and C just to be conservative with those numbers. But again, you know, total non-residential lot, not right away, not residential lots, is just a touch over 17 acres of the development as proposed. And I had a question about that too, more for Scott. Uh, so yeah, looking on page 30 right there, uh, the Park and Conservancy is the southeast corner, and then through the middle, is it's denoted on here in the green of open space, but then on one of the other maps, that open space lane through the middle was uh, waterway yeah, and, and then a pond at the west. And, and that those those aren't calculated into the parkland dedication. Right, that's what I wanted to find out. Yeah. Did okay. you say they are or are not? They are not. Are not. Okay, okay. good. Okay. They don't get credit for stormwater facilities or drainage ways or, or things like that. They would, if, if they would do a linear, you know, 15 or, or 20 foot easement along that drainage way, then we've, the Park Commission has credited that towards their parkland dedication. For the usable part. Yeah. But in other words, no parkland credit for ponds, stormwater ponds, uh, creek, Correct. anything like Correct. that. Correct. Okay, good. Correct. Um, just a um, note to Craig, maybe, if you could maybe give a slightly different color or something to that open space, because looking on page 30, it's all the same green, and it sort of looked like all proposed parkland. Yeah, thanks for the feedback. That's difficult to show between, you know, the the land use and the zoning map. Um, you know, we struggled a little bit with that, with just the convention that 
staff would like their CDPs presented, and there's some some difficulty there. But we if, appreciate your comment. If not in if not in a different color, if that's somehow a problem, then cross hatch it or something or other. I mean, you do have it noted open space versus P dash C for Park and Conservancy. That that's helpful. Mm -hmm. If I can piggyback on that, on the north end between Lacey and the medium density residential, there appears to be a long linear piece of parkland. Scott, how do you see that being used by the city's park department? You know, there, there's some topography there too, Katie. Um, I, I guess at the end of the day, it'd be something that that I'd, I'd look to see what Craig would be proposing there. I, you know, to me that that could potentially be, you know, conservancy type type property. Um, you know, depending if it, it it's, you know, depending on the size, it, it really is difficult to do any kind of active recreational type type activity there. Uh, and, and that's why I'm really kind of leaning towards, you know, at the bottom of the hill there, it's centrally located, um, where it, it could be a flat space of like three acres or so. And then, you know, the balance is connected through conservancy and, and woodlots and, and those kinds of things. So it creates a diverse experience. Certainly, I, I agree, Katie, that, you know, how, how the, the, the property adjacent to Lacey Road could be utilized for active activity, I, I think that would be limited. That, I think that's a good question for Sue, because in, uh, could you uh, tell me if this is right, in the discussions on the West Lacey Road construction project, I think it's been noted in there that the south side of Lacey Road is quite a steep drop off. That's where there was problems for, you know, the idea at first of putting a sidewalk along that way and everything. And just from thinking of how I've seen the road there, I think it's a pretty steep drop off on the south, so not very useful as park. Yeah, and I'm not sure where this, how this plat lays up against where there are steep drop offs. I'm not, a, I can't judge that. Um, but it just in general, piggybacking on what Katie's saying and what Scott seems to be indicating is there's not a whole lot of use there, uh, any active use. For active, right. It would be. For a walking path or something, potentially. Yeah, and we don't know how steep it will end up being. Um, and then the only access would be on the, the road that intersects with Lacey. There'd be an access there. Um, it might be hard to maintain even as conservancy, depending on how steep it is, and I just don't know. It might just and and I think at, at at the end of the day, I think Craig is is hearing the the park commission loud and clear on their thoughts and ideas, and they may have to go to the drawing board or or try and figure something out. What I can tell you is it's going to be significantly less steep than it is today, and, and we've been struggling to communicate with staff and and the road design consultant on that stretch in particular. We're just having a a disconnect there. Um, Lacey Road's coming down seven feet and we're coming up about seven feet. So the differential there is getting drastically reduced and we're just kind of struggling to get, uh, you know, two engineers to talk to each other and understand how topography affects each. Um, you know, Payne and Nolan kind of understands what the ultimate vision is there. And we're, we're working collaboratively with, with staff and that Lacey Road project team to try to get that a little bit, uh, advance the ball there and get them to see kind of what that long range picture can look like. We think there, that also sits behind some duplexes. So there is some opportunity for, um, you know, we've talked about some community garden types use there. I think there's some opportunity there with, with the trail that would be on the south side of Lacey Road, the shared use path. Um, and again, that, that, that there's a measurable amount of, of land there that can be used and it wouldn't necessarily have to be flat um, it can have some slope to it, but it's, it, it can't be as steep as it is today. And we do think that there's an opportunity with what Lacey Road is doing from a profile perspective and what we're thinking we're going to do from a profile perspective to, to take some of that steep slope out of there and, 
and make it a little more useful. That doesn't mean it's active park for you, but it, it doesn't mean that it's not got some value uh, with some creativity. Greg, I would say that is another uh, parcel that does not have any road frontage within the actual neighborhood. And it would be nice to see access to the neighborhood, especially if we're going to have the new trails along Lacey there, it would be nice to connect them in. That's good feedback that we certainly can incorporate and try to figure out how to show that graphically. Um, Go ahead. A question at the east end of Road C, you have a cul-de-sac, but it is surrounded by lots number um, 13, 14, 15, 16. So that is not proposed as a temporary cul-de-sac to be extended to the east, similarly to that one in the left half down at the bottom off of south off of Road B. That's a temporary one, you said, but not this one on the east. Yeah, that's correct. So, you know, obviously Fitchburg discourages cul-de-sacs. Uh, you know, we don't agree from a planning perspective, but that's okay. Uh, that is a cul-de-sac that we are proposing um, surrounded by four duplex lots. So eight units on that cul-de-sac. And that would stay in place. Oh, those are higher density lots? They have duplex units on them. They're pretty large lots. I mean, those are 30,000 square feet and up lots. Right. Um, but there's two there's a you know a duplex unit on those I see. And again trying to trying to put a little bit higher density unit um along that major street and serve more as a buffer into the single family to the south and remember what's across the street too um you know with Cory vista there's there's some natural transition here from north to south in density Do we have any, uh, Mark, I, Mark, question for you. Um, what is your view of what would be more acceptable as open frontage along that road A, where there's currently, we've said now roughly 300 feet, um, and you, you talked about it, not being adequate, what is adequate to your way of thinking? Road A, where there's at that corner where it intersects um, Road B, uh, there's a corner there, and I think it's a, it would be nice to see some frontage at that location and some decent frontage. And I'll give you an example of, of where and I was mayor at the time, but um, uh, what's the name of that development over there on the east side? Caravessa. Um, Darn it. Along Sain. Along Sain? In an older development? Swan no, Creek. new. Swan, Swan Creek. Creek. Swan Creek yeah. area? Swan Creek. There you go. Thank you. Um, there's an area that was along the, the E way. And, and he, uh, the developer had it all homes, all mm -hmm. planned out. And I thought, you know, because I've seen all the other places of the way where there's all houses backing up to it, and the only access we have is a trail that tra traverses through it. And I'm just, you know, I'm a big advocate of Early Madison and the Park and Pleasure Drive Association. And I think what's missing here was some viewscape. So I insisted with that developer that we protect that area, um, that we, he not build on it at all. And it's not to this day. Um, he did relinquish on it. And, and I like the guy, you know, the developers, um, I know him quite well and I, he's, I think he's always been very fair and he did relinquish that. But I think in the end, um, many years from now, people will really appreciate that because uh, it's gonna offer a place where people wanna go um, when they can't ride a bike or walk and, or they just wanna go somewhere with their 
elderly people, folks or something. But I, you know, I don't want to get too cutesy with this, but I think there's opportunities of getting or improving access to this park. And I don't think it's going to take that much, really. Um, but it's going to have to require some, some access along that corner that's, that's worthwhile. You know, not some couple houses or, you know, a couple lots. Because I don't know how big these lots are, really, the, the width of them. But if they're small lots, big houses, like they got over at Terra Vista, um, uh, you know, it's going to be pretty well blocked in. Right, right. So are you looking at, let's say, again, I guess page 27 seems to have the best map with the lot numbers on. Lots 10, 11, 12. Yeah have the direct view into the west, from the west into the southeast corner? Well, I'm advocating, you know, from 8 to 12, 13, up to wherever, you know, somewhere in that area, there's got to be a decent area where you could get some street frontage in there where um, I think get some access and, and also some view to it. I mean, it's worthwhile. I agree. As another possibility here, you know, depending on how much we want to, of course, throw off their plans, uh, and I don't know the exact land configuration and everything, but just for something to think about here, the street frontage that we have at the north of the park and open space, if, you know, beyond lot 23 there, which is the last one, if lots were, let's say, farther to the north, but then a middle part, somewhere along, oh, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, something around in there instead was open, is more in the middle of that? Yeah, I guess without really walking the land, so to speak. True, yeah. It's, it's hard to tell where, to me anyway, where the, the best spot is. And of course, without roads, you don't have any landmarks. Um, but yeah, you know, I, so somewhere I, in there. And so really, if I'm hearing what you're describing, it's really asking to double the amount of uh, vista into the park from the roads, at least. If we're, only, if we're looking at where lot 23 ends and then the opening along the road up to lot 13, and then mm -hmm. the, that's roughly 300 feet, and then you're talking about you mentioning down where lots 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 in there, that's at least as, that's at least as double. And I, I'm a proponent of more views, into, significant views into the park as well, so I'm glad you raised the issue. It's our opportunity to say that. We're not the only ones with a say in it, but that would be my view as well. That's why I asked earlier whether Plan Commission had looked at it yet. They're, they're next in line, Scott, correct? Plan Commission? Okay. Did they get our report, or your report, I should say, on, on comments on? Yep, that's who, I, that's who I submitted to. Okay. The Plan Department. A question to Craig then, is there anything significant about the current street frontage at the north end of this park and open space? Is there a reason why that was selected for street frontage into this area rather than anywhere along uh, that uh, part of road A? Or B. It's the, mo it's the most level and, and has view and access and connectivity into the quarry to the east. Is that something reasonable to consider if the street frontage may be shifted a little farther west along Road A? Yeah, I think, I mean, I'm hearing your comments and we need to, you know, take them back and process through them. And, okay. You know, weigh them with plan commission comments too and, and then, you know, make some decisions and probably have some subsequent follow-up with, with maybe some commissioners or staff at a minimum and uh, you know what what refinements are made moving forward yeah and it, the, the feedbacks 
you know, appreciated. Yeah, and, and of course it does count, which we can't tell on what the vista is from Road A, looking into their, looking into that uh, ridge and that woods and everything. So we're sort of guessing at what the view might be. Yeah, the ridge, the ridge sits well above Road A. You know, Road A is at the base of the of the outcroppings, and that's one of the challenges we've had is lots. You know, the backs of those lots, the lots that back up to that wood lot, oh. are going to are going to be shaded. Um, and it's your southern exposure, so there's some there's some balance there too. Okay, so it may be helpful. Uh, potentially, yeah. That's we. Okay. You know, the feedback is the feedback is appreciated. Anything else? Anyone? This, I presume, I mean, you said you and Scott walked in here, so this is way far off of Lacey Road. So. For us, let's say driving along Lacey Road, we have no opportunity, no uh, possibility of seeing the ridge. Is you it, can is see it. it close it's to very see? visible. Uh, just pull down into Payne and Dolan South parking lot. You go to the lower side of the building. You can from that parking lot, which park is where safe to park, park in, where their office is. Um, oh, you okay. can you can see that entire wood lot sitting out on the south. To the south of the agricultural field. Okay. It, tower, it towers above that agricultural field. Okay, I was figuring this was pretty far back off of, uh, way south off of Lacey Road and not possible to see what we're talking about on site. Yeah, you, you can, can absolutely okay. see it. Just, okay. pull into our park, just pull into our parking lot there and you'll see it sitting across the ag field. You know, if you look at page 25, you know, you can see the, the size of it. Um, you're more than welcome to pull into our parking lot and. Yeah. That's where Scott and I looked at it from. We looked at it from the edge of the agricultural field. And when you say your your parking lot, I'm looking at page 26, and that's lot one uh, of Payne and Dolan. <laughs> Correct. I see. Okay. Next yep. to the next to Diane Remica's. Remica, yeah. There's a sign there right out front in, that says Payne and Dolan. So okay. There's some parking in the front of the building on the upper level, and then there's a little driveway that goes to a lower level parking lot in the rear. Um, that's really closer to the agricultural field elevation. You're more, more than welcome to, to visit our parking lot and, and take a peek across the field. It, it's a significant woodlot. Um, again, outcroppings in there. It sits substantially above the agricultural field. You can't miss it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sure. Just don't go into our quarries. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Or okay. Well, thank you for spending time with us, Craig. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Okay. Our next uh, agenda item is 6B, resolution R95-21, amending the 2021 Park B budget for Nine Springs Golf Course Shed Edition. And this, um, I, I believe you're all familiar, and actually I included in your packet. It might be best to go to uh, page 44 of your packet. Uh, and what we're looking to do is we're looking to actually uh, do a 675 foot addition uh, to this storage facility to the east with the idea to try and, and uh, there has been some concerns raised, visual concerns raised by the new development there, along with, you know, the equipment is sitting outside and, and those kinds of things. So that's what this uh, proposal is to do. And if you, uh, we do have a CIP on page 43. Uh, we do have a CIP project uh, for this, uh, and what we're proposing to do is move uh, the $21,000 from 2026 uh, to 2021. Uh, and actually, the $9,000 that you see there is to recite it, uh, but we wouldn't need to recite it. So what we're looking to do is basically keep the same uh, type of structure, uh, a wood structure with the same roof line and the same siding and, and those kinds of things. Uh, no, it's, it's wooden timber with trusses and on a concrete floor. You know, it's 
I, you know, I don't know what your definition of a pole barn is, but yeah, it's like a regular, it's just a garage. With, with wood siding? Yep, wood, with wood siding, right, right. Um, and then what we're proposing to do is to use, uh, with it being a, a, a community park, Nine Springs, we're proposing to use a fee in lieu of parkland dedication from the uh, Cory Ridge Retirement Community Development. And I will note that there's, and I did include that in my comments, there's $562,900 in park, fee in lieu of parkland dedication for that development available. Uh, so what we would do is we would, we would add 54,000, I believe it's 54,000 to that 21 uh, to come up with the 75,000. Uh, I will note that with this being a, a budget amendment, it, <clears throat> the council is going to have to pass it on a, on a two-thirds two vote. So they'll need six, six of the eight to approve the, the budget amendment, which is basically what this is. Is there a reason why we always use parkland dedication instead of park development? I don't know. Things have really changed since What's the 20 years ago because we had a treasurer that was a hawk on that. We didn't touch that. Well, the, the, the use of the fees that are available, and they're, they're certainly usable in this, in this, uh, this, this manner. Well, you know, maybe it's off track, but it's just, you know, it just seems like we've, we've um, used something that even says parkland dedication or parkland. It's for the purpose of purchase of parkland, yeah. and you were using it for other things. Well, and we, I guess, you know, you know, if we did have an opportunity, would we be able to even take it? And I don't know, just, what, just Mark, a comment. I, what, I don't mind your proposal, but well, in, I in, in, wonder why we use something that I think is, should be used for purchasing land. What are these two funds, Mark, and what's the difference between them? Well, what, what, what he's saying is uh, the, the fee, well, if you look at my comments, you know, fee in lieu of parkland dedication, uh, this development didn't, didn't provide any parkland, so we took fee in lieu of that parkland dedication. So what Mark is saying is that those dollars should be utilized to purchase land. Uh, but we have used those dollars for McKee Farms Park, for McGaw Park, for all of our all of our community parks to make improvements to them. Um, well, I've noticed we've used that in the past for various different things, yeah. and I just, I don't know, just seems from a county perspective, it's just wrong to use something that should be used for land purchase. Go ahead, Patrick. Um, <laughs> permission. <laughs> um, couple questions and uh, we're looking at a couple different things right here. I see it's in your uh, um, agenda notes right here. It mentions about the, um, where did I, oh, Quarry Ridge Retirement Community. <laughs> where is the Quarry Ridge Retirement Community? And I was taking a wild guess that it was related to Quarry Ridge, way over in the west, Quarry Ridge Park area, Quarry Vista, uh, is that where this is? Well, it, it's, it's, it's by, it's, I believe it's on Fitchrona there. Okay, no, so, okay, good. So, it's way over there, so why Parkland dedication from there for Nine Springs Golf Course? And, and that was a, a recommendation from finance because that's, with, our, with the new Act 243 in regards to funds that we collect, we, we, we need to use the ones, there's a, there's a time limit on the ones that we need to use, so we collected that a while back, so her thought oh. was to, let's utilize those funds before we lose okay, them. Okay, they're kind of like the oldest funds. That those are the oldest ones that we've collected. In an right? account, okay, that's reasonable. And um, I presume that most of your notes right here that we're looking at are on page 42, is that good? Page 42. It has your... Uh, yep, that's my... Okay. That's my memo. All right. 
right. Now, when I read this before, I don't see exactly the same thing that I was thinking of before, but it seemed there was, you know, you mentioned $9,000 for residing. Yeah. And then, and then you also said right here, 21,000 moved ahead a few years to do this work. But I didn't see if you look at 9,000 for the siding was going to be used or not or it, what. It, it, if you look at page 43, the CIP uh, for 2026. Yes. You can see where there's 21,000 for the facility and then nine for the siding. And then you can see below it that actually the 9,000 was going to be a tax levy because that's an improvement. It's not a new thing. Oh, so in other words, you can't use park funds for yeah. not for not for maintenance, no, uh -huh. yeah. but for new things. So we won't. So the property tax levy won't be hit for nine thousand in twenty twenty six because we're not. Oh, would that eliminate the nine thousand by will. this project? Yeah. Oh, good. I like that. <laughs> um, okay, then I, um, if I could make a suggestion on something, I was kind of. Please do. <laughs> I was. I was kind of considering. Uh, going, stopping in there, and Dan Larson is still the operator there, right? That's correct, yeah. Okay. And if I go to the right page, you had some good pictures in here, so I kind of saw that it wasn't really necessary. Uh, page 44 has a picture of a building. Mm -hmm. Page 45, the back side of the building. In recent news stories, it has talked about it's all COVID related, COVID has messed up everything. Uh, supply of building materials right. has gone way up. Yeah. Wood especially, the price has gone way up, is spiking. Um, I think it's a combination of factories were shut down and so materials are not being produced. Plus, when everybody was home, everybody was doing home improvement projects and using up all the building materials. So my question here, just to consider, is this a good time to be building something with two possible uh, suggestions here. One would be to just delay the whole thing a year, something like that, see if prices come down more reasonable. Maybe the, you said 75,000 estimate on this project, maybe it'd be better in a year. You know, I guess, you know, unfortunately the equipment has been sitting outside for quite a while. Well, we've got neighbors that are, oh, yeah, that well, are complaining. Tell them it's New it's development. Coming. Um, the other possibility right here, I, you know, the 75,000 was going to be for a f three extra walls and a roof extension onto there. What if in order to just hold it down, let's say temporarily, yeah, you can still see into the side, but what if the roof was extended with poles but not siding put on? In other words, covered storage over the top, add the walls later when, again, material cost comes down? I don't know if they can do that. Uh construction integrity wise, because you have the footings for the poles would be different than footings for the continuous walls, things like that. That could be a problem, I suppose. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I mean, there are open sheds. Yeah, also, I mean, open yeah if, we, sheds. if we had no funds, that would be a place to start. But Scott is also saying these are funds that have to be utilized and we're addressing a, a complaint um, and a, a, a need to get this equipment inside it and complaint from the neighbors, they're tired of looking at it. Looks like green acres over there. That's the thing is it, it, you still see into it from the side. Yeah. For the sake of the equipment, which is, I don't know, our equipment, I believe? No, it belongs to Dan Larson? Okay. For the sake of his equipment parked there, which has been outside for a number of years, at least it had a roof over it, and then the walls could be added when material price come down. But yeah, if there's uh, cross beams and things like this, um, you know, reinforcing and all. It is, a, a, you know, it would be an open-sided roof added onto an existing building roof, so nothing's going to collapse because it's tied onto a substantial building. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't see the pole and roof option solving much, personally. Cost if anyone saving. else has an opinion, please, please offer it. I could lead to some duplication and like mobilization and trip charges and stuff like that too. So it might, it might ultimately, it would, you know, I get, I get Patrick's point about the high cost of materials right now. I just wonder if that ends up coming out in the wash with 
duplicate um, jobs, basically having two different crews come out at two different times and things like that. I'm just not sure, quite sure how that would shake out. Well, what if it was a question asked of the contractors just on a sort of an overview, their opinion of the whole building industry situation right now? Would any of them suggest, you know, this is a bad time to be putting up a building if it is sort of optional and could be delayed? I know that it's counter to their interests, but. Go ahead, thanks. Part of what Scott's trying to do is be a good neighbor. I mean, that there's just a brand new elderly housing complex that's, I don't know how many housing units they have, but it must be a lot. Um, and I think it needs to be hidden. It looks trashy, it looks like, you know, I, I would, as a, if I were living next to it, I would be a little bit object to it as well. Um, belongs under a roof or in a building or something because it just doesn't look right. And, you know, and to we insist that with other uh, developers, you know, why not, why not us? So I think it's, you know, it, it, I agree with you, it's probably the worst time to do it, but, um, there isn't a shortage of construction out there, I can tell you that. On the, and the, along the lines of that, the look that it projects, even the existing building, the way the sign is plastered on the middle of the side of the building and the thing coming off of the top, if we can find out about how to improve the exterior, maybe if we had an architect <laughs> that we could ask. <laughs> <laughs> that, that would cost an additional. That might cost 000. extra, <laughs> but I mean, it's such a it's a basic building that really, if we're gonna we're gonna double the size of this basic building or whatever, um, it's gonna need some landscaping help and uh, s something else with the signage at the very least. Well, I did work for an architectural firm. You know, you did, I did well, architectural work, but I'm not an architect. You're not. You'll. Cl You'll uh, qualify that statement right now. Any any remarks, I David? With a room full of them. <laughs> uh, I don't uh, really. It, it's a dilemma. I agree with Mark's comments. Um, it's it's important for the city to be as responsible for its own projects as we ask developers to be for their projects. That they be complete completely landscaped, that they have some integrity to them. So I don't think we really have a choice. Um, I just had one thought though, when they actually built the senior apartments, they what happened to their money uh, as, as to the, their development in terms of parks? Was there a specific amount that they paid towards a fund for the city? They did, they did uh, and, and I'd have to look. Um, well, that, that's how we received the parkland north of Traceway, which we're doing phase one of the hub. That was their parkland dedication requirement. And we did get some park improvement fees, I suspect, too, from, from them. Okay, well, so, so, again, so, I think it's important for the city to be responsible. I think Mark's comments are good. Idea. Are good. I think the appearance of this isn't in keeping with um, what Fitchburg would like their image to be. It's, you know, quite, um, quite different. So I, I don't think we have a choice. The other thing is that if uh, we bid the project and it comes in over budget, well, then that's a, a different situation. Yes, Patrick. Um, one comment here on trying to work through my thought. I would agree that if we put a roof over it and then let's say put one wall up to screen it from the neighbors, whichever way that be, it's kind of, you know, if you're gonna put one wall up, you might as well put all three of them up. Question to Scott there on this residing, could you explain a little more about what is the, what is the residing proposal? Is it residing of the that entire existing building we, and then adding three walls onto the new addition? No, we were going to reside it so it was similar to the, to the uh, clubhouse. The, we were going to reside this. The existing building plus the, the addition? Or? The, this building so it matched the, okay. the uh, existing clubhouse. 
So is the reciting of the existing building incorporated into building this addition? In other words, you're putting the addition on. Right. While they're working, they also reside no, the, the existing. No. No? No. What's the reciting project? Well, the, it's... The, I, the I reciting was to build the addition and then recite it. So it, would, it wouldn't have been... It wouldn't have been the wood, you know, the wood paneling that we have as siding now. That sounds like what I'm asking. The reciting of what? The existing where that Ninth Spring side sign is on the side of it? Okay. So now what you're saying is that $9,000 goes away. Right. It's not recited. It will have this barnwood style siding on it, as will the new structure that's Correct. tacked onto it. Correct. So none of it will now match the clubhouse. No. Oh. No. No. See so that? No. It still looks like a barn in the middle of an area that we're trying to r really make nice for the whole neighborhood. Well, you can put steel siding like on steel buildings. You can easily add that on, but I don't know the cost of something like that. Yeah. I mean, you could put it right over the wood. That's what I'm saying. You know, there's a lot of ways you can dress it up, but because what's the cost going to come to? What is the uh, the siding on the clubhouse? Is it that, that is uh, prefab prefab siding? Okay, so it's different than this. Absolutely. But that that part matching the clubhouse is going to be abandoned, and this same siding that we see in the picture here was going to be on the addition. So it's dropping the idea of matching the clubhouse. You can kind of see where the clubhouse is off to the left. Okay. Yeah. Does this, okay, this existing large building right here, if it's painted, does yes. it look better? You, you, is, that, is that what kind of what it needs at this point? Is either paint or new siding, one way or the other, something like that? Well, we'll, we'll be painting. better? We're going to paint it, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Then that takes care of it then? Yeah. Okay. It's disappointing to think that, and I understand there's financial limitations, but disappointing to think that we can't come up with something that looks a little better than what we're going to have by adding the addition, additional space on the storage shed. So I don't know if any others with more expertise have any idea of. Well, I, I you know, I think it, it really, to some degree, is a, you know, makeshift improvement. You know, if you want to put a new storage facility and all of those kinds of things, we, you know, we could put that into a CIP. But at this point, it's really. We're just trying to make the best of the of the situation and and in ex, you know as as cost effective as we can and the what we came up with was to just expand it with the same building material and mm -hmm. and and you know do the best we could in short notice and just as a point of there's a construction here is the wood that is i presume removed off of the end of the building that we see on page 45 especially uh, used for the sides of the addition? No. It's, that's a cost savings. I don't know. Well, I don't know what condition it's in. So, Anything like that would help. You know, here, with, with I, we're, we're being asked tonight to vote on, resolu on this resolution, which gives us a go-ahead to do a basic addition on a storage structure The, yeah, the count. Well, the the council referred it to you for your for your thoughts, and then mm -hmm. the council will take action on it at correct, their next correct. at their next meeting. So, you know, they're they're looking for what your thoughts are. Okay, so yeah. they wanted just a list of our thoughts. Well, they 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 want to know whether you're in favor or not in favor, kind of thing. Well, hopefully, with our uh, suggestions for uh, what value that might have as it goes into a bid. Yeah. I mean, we can say we're in favor of getting, of covering, creating more storage space, not 
I, I personally am just not in favor of it being a longer extension of a building that's, I don't know that the neighbors are gonna be all that much happier that this stuff is covered up with just a longer barn. Um, there might be ways to make that work. Landscape architects might know and. Uh, shrubs, lots of shrubs. <laughs> lots and lots of shrubs, <laughs> Mark says. Yeah, well, at least we're putting the equipment inside of a building instead of sitting out like That's that, true. which apparently That's is true. their objection. So, so what know. should we, shall we, um, does someone want to offer a, um, or Can a, I ask a, a motion question to, before we sure, get please that do. far? Yep. Scott, is it possible when it goes to bid to get an alternate for, you know, the main project and an alternate for siting it, for siting the entire structure to match the clubhouse? Certainly, certainly. Because if, you know, if, if, you know, granted the plan was for five years down the road, but if I'm understanding it right, it was about a $9,000 ad as well, far as, you know, in the budgeting to make it basically look and cohesive. The, well, and the addition was a 21,000 budget, so you can see where, how good my uh, budget estimating was, we're at 75, so I'm gotcha. thinking the I nine see. might be a little yeah, bit more. Nine, I guess nine does sound a little low, but I, I would be really interested if that was possible to see what that difference is. And you know, if we have a hard number and the council has a hard number to assign to it, it might become a lot more clear you know, whether or not it's worthwhile. And I can, I can see if we can't do that, Chris. Yeah, and I like that. As I mentioned about the pickleball courts and parking lot, I like alternates in bids. So the council and us or whoever has choices when we get the hard numbers and we can decide what seems reasonable, what's too expensive, drop that and go on from there. So I like alternates. And I mean, if you wanna propose different ways of uh, doing this addition, anything that, that, you know, from what we've discussed, that could be alternates to choose from also. I'm just going to do an, an alternate for siding, see if we can do an alternate for siding to match the existing clubhouse. I would ask uh, some contractor to evaluate the wood on that, whatever that side, the end side of the building is, see if it can be reused. If the idea is tear it off and throw it away, uh, let's make sure that's reasonable. And By this time you pull nails out of the siding and take it down, it's going to be pretty bad shape. Well, uh, you're better it, off just leaving it, yeah. cutting a hole for a doorway or something. Yeah. Looks like a lot of wood. Yeah. It, that could be a whole one wall. It'd be a fabulous bonfire, too. <laughs> I think the neighbors would like that. <laughs> All right, so we're looking for, then, a motion to approve the resolution that also expresses our comments, wish list? I'll move approval yes. and also to suggest alternate to, that was discussed. Okay, is there a second? I second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 No opposed? We have approved it. And so we're going to move on to communications. And yes. The, take it away, the, Scott. Yep. Should I roll through these? Please do. Very good. The first one is the, uh, we did have the Stoner Prairie Park Planning Ad Hoc Committee meeting on, I believe it was April 21st. I did include uh, in your packet uh, minutes uh, to that meeting uh, and I would, basically what I did is I kind of rolled through a lot of base map information or park and open space plan, uh, a little bit about, um, you know, surveys and, and things that we had taken before in the past. Uh, and, and the big thing that I, I, I tried to express to them is in letter, page 50, letter G, uh, you know, the different steps that I, I saw us going through is first off the information gathering. So we're getting the base map information and where everything is. And our next step, uh, which you can kind of see on the, on the bottom was begin to start to put together some survey questions to get to the neighbors. Uh, and once we get those questions out, we can 
you know, the group can take a look at the data and, and what people are interested in doing and begin to start to put a plan together. Uh, and then certainly go through the, the public process with that plan, come to the Park Commission for comments and, and things like that. And then at the end of the day, we'd, we'd have a plan that, that we'd be ready to begin to start to implement. Uh, they did elect uh, three chair, chair people, uh, Janelle Rice, uh, Sue Easterday, uh, who's our Park Commission Chair, and Sashin Tooley are the are the chairs of the committee, and, and really we're, we're kind of relying on them now to take the lead on putting the agendas together, uh, running the meetings, and, 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 and getting us through the process, certainly staff. And Chad is the, Chad Siegel is the, the staff liaison to this uh, committee, but staff is here to support uh, the efforts that they're, that they're working on, so. And I don't know if you had something else you want or addition that you wanted to do, report, Sue? No, we can go to. It, and then the next one is I just reported, I wanted to report that the council approved uh, resolution 7821 for the median landscape, uh, both the, the, the mowing and the, um, and the landscape maintenance. Uh, they did approve the tree planting plan for 2021. Oh, um, wait a second. On the well, it's both of them here. The median landscape maintenance contract and the median mowing contract, there will dual um, resolutions there. The one with and the one without the RCC, they apparently voted approval of the ones with RCC. With, well, well, it wasn't gonna go to RCC. Yeah, but I mean, did they somehow for, pick those two and approve those and kind of discard the other two? They did, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. But RCC wasn't going to meet and wasn't going to would, wouldn't have an opportunity to review it anyway. Right. Okay. Uh, item C, the tree planting plan, as I mentioned, was approved. Uh, they did uh, approve the community park designation for the hub. Um, I did. Uh, I wanted to provided some park park project updates for you, and I tried to do that in pictures, which. Um, you know, we've got a lot of, there's like 30 new community gardens within the, within the community. Uh, we, we had an Arbor Day activity. Anna coordinated that with the Oak Meadow uh, neighborhood, and they planted some trees. Uh, what, the Wildwood uh, roof was finally finished. Katie uh, is smiling. <laughs> She's two doors <laughs> away was, from the roof. That was, of, quite, a, that was quite a project. <laughs> Uh, and if it then, was still daylight, I would have a good view. What's that? If it was still daylight, I'd have a very good view of that new roof. <laughs> yes. It, 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 well, and then uh, some, some work in area one of the McGaw Woods Management Plan. Shared that. Uh, and then I actually, they, they have the, the base course for the in the for the uh, pickleball courts, the path going east to west, and then they've got the base ready for the pickleball courts. And on that, uh, it's unknown at this time when a paving crew is I, yeah, going to I, show I, up. Yeah, I don't know. Okay, what are the green pipes that were just added at the south edge of the pickleball area? I, I couldn't. They weren't know. there a week ago, and all of a sudden there's green pipes sticking up out of the ground. They they may be. Yeah, I I, I couldn't tell you, Patrick. Okay. I couldn't tell Could you. Did you find out and let me know? The green pipes. Yes, three well, green pipes. Green pipes. Well, everything was graveled and packed and ready for paving. And then Those I did. Those might see. be for the footings for the, for the fence, possibly. There's only Is three there a lot on of one them? side. There's only three of them? Well, that's what I saw. I okay. Mean, I can find out what they are. And then they apparently came in and dug into the gravel, at, you know, being ready for paving, and then dug into the gravel and put these pipes in. So I don't know what they're for. They're capped. Drain tile? I don't know. Yeah, I'll it don't look like it. I'll see what I can. I'll see what I can find out. Okay. And I did include. Uh, I think there was some question about the land division, Chapter Twenty Four, of the uh, of the zoning code. So I included that for information. And then I've got my uh, park report. Oh, we've got. Wait a minute. Okay. Okay. Um, it wasn't so much land division zoning, 
it was the park dedication and the fee in lieu of land dedication for developments. That's why I wanted something on this. Well, and, and you can, you know, you can certainly search the web page. It, it, these are all within the, the ordinances, so I, I thought I was getting what you wanted. Oh, yeah, there. yeah, this looks right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I well, you would be very familiar with this. I was. I wanted to ask you here in the meeting. Could you give us? This is a full page of text right here. Could you give us a nice, clear uh, opinion statement on how the dedication of land is supposed to get, be? How it's supposed to, the process from developers? Well, I, and I, land and versus I, fee. Well, I think uh, I think the the discussion we had tonight was a, a good example that they come in with their plat, the park commission gives their comments, and then they. Yeah come up with their final final deal or final idea. Right. Um, and if we remember the April meeting, there was a developer who seemed to have it pretty good in his mind that it was a developer's choice about whether they give the city land or whether they choose to pay the fee and that's what we were supposed to go to, which I or go with, which I highly objected to. That's why I asked for this. So reading this over, the, the, the park commission is the is the one that, right. that recommends to the common council. The common council decides. Right. There is things in here that says uh, the park, the sole discretion of the park commission has the decision. So I just wanted to emphasize that and get it clear here that the park commission has the sole discretion and then the council approves that recommendation about if the park commission wants acreage or if the park commission agrees to allow the developer <laughs> to request paying the 65,000 per acre to buy back some of the land, the acreage that they are otherwise required to dedicate to the city for developments. What, what, what was that? In other words, uh, just like on your earlier page for... Development? Mm -hmm. This Fitchburg Minerals. I'm right. not picking on them. Actually, on other ones more so. Uh, the developer... Uh, the first idea is you go through the calculation and you figure out the number of units times the square footage. Right. That comes up with an amount of acreage. Right. At that point, the developer at first cut is supposed to provide that much acreage to the city for parkland dedication. And then the alternative to consider more by the park commission than anybody, sole discretion, is that there's also an alternative calculation of $4,330 times the number of residential units, dwelling units. And then the park commission in its sole discretion is the one who decides, do we want more Rec acreage recommend. or will we allow them to pay a fee and essentially buy back some of that dedicated acreage by paying the fee? But sole discretion is on the park commission. So that's what this reads as, right? The uh, way I read it. The park commission recommends to the council and then they decide. The council has the final say, yes. Right, right. But the decision on acreage versus fee in lieu of land dedication is at the sole discretion of the park commission. We, we, we decide that, yeah. Okay, good, good. Uh, I want to relate a little story here that I've heard over the years. And Scott knows what I'm talking about, or you will. Um, in the past, uh, well, if you go, I believe it's on Hard Rock, uh, south of the Orchard Point, um, Target area, all of that, the Target store and everything, south of there in Hard Rock. Drive along there and look on the east side of Hard Rock. This is between Hard Rock and Nesbitt Road. And there is a cliff side along there that just looks dangerous. That is a city park. It doesn't even have a park sign or name on it. And in the past years ago, uh, in particular, past member Glenn Clickner used to just rail on how the city got 
essentially taken uh, on allowing that, well, that particular land dedication right there um, because the developer couldn't use it at all. They didn't, uh, well, they mined out a whole lot of rock for probably building the roads and everything in there. And then when they got to the edge of the uh, large route, a rock outcropping, they couldn't use this, so they give it to the city as park. And Glenn Clickner used to say, the city, the park commission, whoever, should have looked at that to realize what we were being given. In this case, it is an unusable cliff face about 50 feet high. If you try to walk on there, you're lab I mean, I don't know how, if rocks fall off of that or what, but it certainly looks like it could. I have walked along the top of it. It looks dangerous. You couldn't even do rock climbing on that thing. It is so dangerous for, they, you can see the drill holes where they blasted it away and then they just stopped at a point. And the leftover unusable was given to the city as parkland. There's also been a trend over recent years right here of developers who go the other way. Well, a lot of them try to just um, pay off the city with 65,000 per acre and keep all the land or as much as they can possibly sell in usable lots. And then the trend lately uh, for, some of, for some of them is to search around the entire city and find land for sale really cheap which uh, is frequently low land. Sometimes, I know in some cases, includes DNR delineated wetland. I call it swampland. It's unusable as a park, and they buy this up. Now, wetland is not uh, creditable for parkland, but there's been some cases where they bought it some really cheap land, 10 cents on the dollar, and then offered that to the city for the parkland dedication so they're not even paying the 65,000 per acre for the land, they're paying 10 cents on the dollar and then that is their parkland acreage that they dedicate to the city. So See, the, I, the commission needs to watch this closely to see closely. what land we're being given and, and the, their, in other words, it is also not their choice of give us the fee and keep all the land. If we like the land, if we wanted you know, more acreage or remove some lots on a, a certain proposal, you know, for better uh, uh, street frontage, visibility and everything into a park, that's our discretion. Well, we then should be aware of that as we move forward. Right, exactly. And, and uh, Mark, do you have any, Mark, with your background over the years, is this something that you've observed uh, or is it? Well, historically, I guess we've always relinquished to the uh, fee in lieu of yeah parkland. okay it's well it seems like yeah we're we're brought into the process after a lot of those decisions have been made no, regardless of what it says on that document right that is that correct fair yeah. to say all right just listen it, you know it's a prerogative of the park commission really right. yeah okay and, and, just and, just rewatch the April meeting for uh, when that developer was here and as I say he had it thoroughly in his mind that it was his decision or developers decision about how much fee they will give us and how much land they will allow us to have and that's their decision and I've seen this with some other developers as okay. well and the thing is that uh, the way the trend has gone over the past few years the city is going to end up owning all of the wetland and swamp land as supposedly park dedication if this is not watched carefully. I see that, Katie. Well, some, sometimes there's some give and take, but it, you know you have to look at the parkland and see whether it meets the objectives of what a good parkland yeah, should be, correct. What, what good park should be. And I think that's just how park commissions in the past have worked. And well, we'll we and shall present strive as well. And we shall strive to do that. Any more from you, Scott? Well, in, in actually, if we, uh, I did want to report that in the forestry department, uh, the park forestry assistant, Samantha Schwartz, Yay. was offered and accepted. So she'll begin after Memorial Day. Uh, and then from the rec department, it's CC, oh, and I, I, I don't recall her last name, but she'll begin May 17th, is that a week from Monday? So 
We're getting uh, here we're getting our staff. Well, oh, there it is, CC stage. Yeah. Uh, so she'll begin May seventeenth. So I Ce wanted to report that. Cecilia, right? It, yeah, she goes by CC. CC right? okay. Cecilia. Okay. Uh, I did have a couple questions about the reports. Go ahead. In the um, recreation reports. Uh, it looks like things are opening up and um, activities are being planned and going to be taking place and everything. Are there any COVID restrictions or limitations on reservations, let's say for shelters or uh, group sports? No, basically with, uh, with the activities, um, if, the, if the participants are participating, they, they don't need to maintain six feet distance or keep a mask on, but they do still ask that the parents and, and, and the spectators uh, maintain that six foot distancing. The shelters are basically, they're, uh, they're going to, you know, limit, you know, limits that are 150 with food, 350 without food, so it, it's really, like you say, it is opening up. So, and we're we're getting a lot of, a lot of shelter reservations and recreational programming, participation. So, it's it's going good. That 150 and 350 is that still some restriction, or is that just wide open? That that's pretty wide, pretty okay. wide open. Yeah. So the general idea here is that for outside activities, it's pretty relaxed by it, now. It, it is, okay. it is at this point, yeah. All right. Yeah. And that may even change uh, again in a month. Hopefully, so, yes. Yeah. On the parks report, um, there was a couple things that I noted in there. It's, uh, Joran has down splash pad startup. Mm -hmm. Any any uh, reports of any split pipes this time? I, not, not at this point, no. Okay, good. No. And the painting and rebuilding of the park signs, that's still moving along. There's still more to do. Oh, well, they, they, they need to be installed. There's no more painting or things doing. So no, they've been refurbished, just have to be put back on posts or correct, such? Correct, correct. Okay, so that's almost completed. Then well, in the, it's getting there. Or, well, it's, it's, it's moving along. Yeah. Because Chad's not working on that. Anymore. No, no. Right? This is no. back to parks crew. Yeah. Uh, so... Um, that was a savings by not having to contract that out as was originally proposed. And uh, the last line says, new park sign RFP. What is that for? We've, uh, we've got like, is it 13 or 14? Well, we've got some parks that need to be named, but we've got other parks that we already have that we don't have. Signs for brand new signs like Sunnyside, for example. Sunnyside, There's yeah. no sign there, but right. it's got a name. We need to sign for yeah. it. So that's yeah. what that is. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Sue. Yes, please. Um, Scott, I had a question about the uh, Seminole Glen Park. Um, has that drainage issue been resolved that was brought? Uh, not that I'm not that I'm aware of. No. Um, what is the course of action? What, what are the next steps? That, it, I, I believe Claudia and the, the stormwater group are, are, working with the, are working with the neighbors. Okay, I'm following up just in the sense that uh, I think it's David Hecht when he was here was quite, seemed to be quite frustrated that there wasn't some Clear course of action. And well, and, and and we we did ask Dave for some for some some ideas, and we haven't heard. You know, I haven't heard anything from him yet. Okay, fine. Thank you. And we are through with your uh, director's mm -hmm. report. Do we have any future agenda items? Is that is that where we're at? Did you have any that you wanted? I, not, 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 that I can, not that I can think of. Yeah. I'm I mean, sure things will, things somewhere will down up. the road, it doesn't have to be next month, but there are the unnamed parks. Yes. And yes. we, I did, had contacted the um, Historical Society, and then uh, they, wor they worked with you as well. And they came up with names that, um, have some some have historical references and some are just naming the park after the name of the street that it's currently on. 
I had hoped for some more imagination, uh, but we all got wound, we get wound up in other things that take more of our attention. Wondered about school, any school groups uh, wanting to think about it um, as a social studies project, but then school wasn't meeting regularly. So it, from my end, as far as I got, was just getting the input from the Historical Society between the two of us. And, and actually, I got some information from Tom Tom Havel, a former city planner. So he had some good perspective on the history and yeah, in the ones that actually refer to people and activities of Fitchburg. So those are good ones. Yeah, yep. they certainly are worthy of consideration. So you know, whether it's this next month or further down the road, that's up to you as far as unless anyone else is in a hurry. Oh, yeah. I know you really do want to get all the signs finished up and put in place. We're, we're working towards that, towards that end. All right. What did you say the Historical Society said? About? Well, they had, um, and maybe what we should do is, is come up with the list for everyone to see that Historical Society worked out with Scott. I had sent them the letter of request, but then Tom Hovell was familiar with Scott and, and they communicated in that direction. And so they did come up with some names of people or places that would reflect Fitchburg history in the, in the name of parks in certain regions. We identified what the regions were and um, how they could be located on a map. Because you, you can say you've got a park in XYZ neighborhood, but that doesn't always translate to well, whose farm was that, if that's the interest or what factory or was there, that type of thing. So we got that list straightened out, Scott and I did. Then the Historical Society, including Tom Hovell, came up with the list. And so there are some that have some inventiveness to them, but then they, like the rest of us, are looking at other parks and there's really nothing to tell us that we should call it anything in specific. So they came up with the same thing that we might in our most generic sense, well, we're gonna call that, for example, Wildwood Park because it's in the Wildwood subdivision. And there's nothing wrong with that. But we were, you know, so some are more creative than others. Is that fair, Scott? Mm -hmm. I, that's fair. Okay, all right. I'm curious, does a city sell the, or used to sell a, a book called the History of Fitchburg. I just wonder if they, are you aware that if they still sell it? It's a, it, uh, it's a pretty old book, I mean. I think, I think their Lenny, or uh, Winnie Lacey might. Yeah, I've got. Might have those. Yeah. I've got a number of them, but I, yeah. I'd be nice if, you know, it doesn't bring you up to present, but it does give you a, kind of a short synopsis of right. the past anyway. Yeah. And, well, and it's, the good thing is uh, Winnie Lacey is one of the people that also was asked for her input and then the others on the Historical Society, so I hope they use the book. I mean, a lot of it's in their heads, I'm sure. She'd be a good person to talk to because she's got a history and a family history here. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so we are through director's report. Um, uh, at some point, we'll revisit the park names to really get it firmed up so Scott can actually finish the job. I don't know if any other things are. We have uh, the next two meetings, June 3rd, 3rd, not the 4th, and July 1st. Motion to adjourn. July 1st. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, never mind. Got it. Fine. <laughs> Must be a Thursday. Second. There's a motion. I'll move to adjourn. Okay, Chris's motion. Second? Yep. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's 924. 924. Bye bye.